Hello, good evening and welcome. About 25 hours ago, one of my brothers, a chief, uh, was brutally shot and murdered in cold blood. The incident occurred after several death threats had been made towards Nanakwekujima Akwana, the traditional ruler of uh, Siakwa in the Bron Ahafo uh, region. Two of his cars had been torched three months prior to his uh, murder. The background for this aggressive behavior is chieftaincy dispute. Traditionally, there are lines of succession and accession that must be adhered to. Lately, though, it seems those lines are blurred by the day. How can we bring into sharp focus what needs to be done? How do we keep things like this from happening again? Every time, uh, every crime perpetrated against Nanakwa Kujimakuna was reported to the police. As a citizen of Ghana, he did not be afraid to walk through the streets and indeed relax in his backyard after an event should he so desire. As a citizen, did he need extra security because of his position as a traditional ruler? Now, that's what we're here to discuss today. We're here to analyze, you know, the chieftaincy dispute, resolution, and sec security. The Minister for Chieftaincy and Traditional Affairs, you know, holds this rather dear to his heart. And he's in the studio with me uh, so that we talk about this issue. Dr. Henry Dana, Minister for Chieftaincy and Traditional Affairs, is in the studio to talk to me. Joining us on the phone later would be Felix Longi, Research Fellow, University of University, uh, Development Studies, and then ACP Patrick Edusei Sapon uh, of the Bonohafu uh, Police Commander. Uh, Joshua Beidu is a school administrator in the Siaka uh, Bonohafu area. My name is Nana Sakwao, and with a solemn heart, I say this is PM Express. Right after the break, we get talking the complex matter of chieftaincy. Say do Dana. You're welcome. Thank you. Dr. Chief Tansi disputes. Uh, it's, uh, it's like trying to settle a battle where both sides are fighting for God. It becomes very difficult. The passions are high. Everybody is a royal. We are all entitled to the stew. And uh, you are at the helm of affairs. I mean, how do we even begin to tackle such an issue? Well, thank you. First of all, let me. Uh, by way of analysis, try to explain that to understand chieftaincy dispute, um, we need to understand where we are coming from uh, against our background in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have research have identified several types of chieftaincy dispute. In fact, in the, there are so many types that some types are not in this country, but I'm talking about those we have identified in our country. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to ask yourself the cause of a dispute. When you know the cause, that helps you to understand it. We have what we call jurisdictional disputes in chieftaincy. I'm talking about a dispute between chiefs over jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And that is to say, like you mentioned your villages, mm -hmm. cluster, who owns what? That, that could be an issue in chief that could lead to dispute. The borderlines. Borderlines. Not, not, not just land, but the borderlines in jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. who, is, who is this village under you, so-and-so chief? Oh, yes. <laughs> or is this village under me, so-and-so chief? Who takes orders from who? Because the chieftaincy structure is like a military command. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind that before the coming of the European, when we ruled ourselves along the lines of our immemorable customs and traditions. Chieftaincy was a, a, a sort of military command. You had chiefs when they what used to call the three-tier formation. So it, it basically was a military structure. And so that being the case, jurisdiction is very important in chieftaincy. And 
that that is one of the big, that is one of the main causes of chieftaincy. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call uh, succession chieftains, succession dispute. That is a chief dies, and the issue is who mm -hmm. sits on the, the, the skin of stool. Mm -hmm. And like you rightly said, you have several royals, and or many, more, sometimes hundreds. And then uh, one big chief who rules uh, some, I would say, two or three centuries ago in the northern part of this country, whoever said, quoted to be said that chieftaincy is like a, a juicy bone which every dog would like to grab at. <laughs> and so na naturally, when a chief has uh, 15 sons and then uh, he dies, I mean, it's natural. Each of them would like to have a bite. And uh, in the matrilineal line, if there are three sisters having from the same lineage, mm -hmm. and then the, the, wife, the wife is gone, the soul is vacant, naturally you, you see people, you know, everybody wants to have a go. Doctor, if you hold on one second, uh, mm -hmm. Felix has joined us on the, uh, on the phone. Uh, hello, Felix. Good evening, my brother. Good evening, how are you? It's been a while since I last uh, joined you online from Tamale. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and welcome yeah. back to the show. Thank you very much. Felix, we're talking something very sensitive and maybe complex, and it's chieftaincy uh, disputes. Uh, yes. Is there a silver bullet or it's, it's forever going to be, you know, like this? Anytime there's a vacancy? We have to ask, uh, can you speak up a little because I'm using the phone on my ears. Okay, I'll say uh -huh. that uh, chieftaincy disputes. Yeah. Uh, is there a formula that we can put in place to make sure that they stop? Or yeah. it's, it's always going to be with us? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's difficult to answer, but I believe that there can be a way forward if um, we all commit ourselves to the solution of um, the problem of incessant chieftaincy disputes in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And the long, uh, the, the, there are so many ways we can solve it. I haven't heard the, uh, what the, uh, the Honorable Minister said in relation to what uh, should be done to probably solve the, the problem. But I believe you would also mention uh, issues like, there are so many ways. You have a short-term solution, you have a long-term solution. A short-term solution is as in the Siakwa case, uh, usually the police will step in and maintain peace and, uh, so that they can avoid maybe a possible reprisal attack. Again, they can, uh, in the case of that area, and I will want to talk about that area before I go to the general issues, if okay. you permit me. Yeah. In the case of that area, I believe that... Um, what they have already done is in the right direction, but I thought that in future, the police probably should act with dispatch. Because when I, my little, I'm not very uh, conversant with the details of that particular case, but I'm told and I read about the fact that there has been a text message warning about an imminent attack on the man's life, and the, the, the chief. I'm told actually informed the the the, the Bonahafo Regional Police, but probably they were a little slow in acting very fast to actually um, uh, uh, test the situation. So in future, such uh, 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 prompts, as we call as early warning signals or prompting signals, should be heeded to very early and taken uh, seriously. Now, once it has happened. Um, I don't know for whatever cause, but the first, the solution to every problem is to find out the causes, what led to the, uh, the issue. They may be deep seated, long term uh, uh, disputes. They may also be uh, an immediate cause. And I believe a solution uh, to such a case, a long term solution, will actually involve the thorough investigation of the root causes of the disputes. Maybe they, there has been a long standing dispute. Uh, there has been a long-standing misunderstanding over an issue. It could be over land, it could be over occupancy of the, the stool, or it could be over something else. A, a thorough investigation of the root causes will be the first step. Now, while the causes have been unraveled, a, a, a committed effort should be made to resolve the issues through wide-ranging consultations with almost all the appropriate 
stakeholders involved in a matter. If it is two factions or three factions or how many factions, attempts should be made to address those issues. Now, the other thing I'll talk about is that in Ghana, and you can, you can bear, with, bear with me that in many of the chieftaincy uh, disputes, the institution that has been mandated to deal with such matters, that is the National House of Chiefs, sometimes are found wanting. Maybe they have their reasons. Uh, maybe they, they, they have some shortfalls, maybe they have not been equipped, they have been or have been empowered either economically, legally, to work or to discharge the duties that the constitution or their establishment expects them to do. Okay, Felix, so hold, fe fe also, Felix, hold okay. on there. I'm going to take a quick break because I'm glad the, uh, the organ grinder himself is here and then we can okay. find out from there. So I'll take a quick break and then when we come okay. back, we find out that, you know, what role does the... Uh, you know, like uh, has, has, yeah, what, what can they play? Yeah. So, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll be straight back. Okay. With us, uh, government, is to ensure that we beat this down, you know, to the barest minimum. And some of these disputes could have been prevented, could have been averted. And this is what we should be doing. And, and the few that even come up, we should be able, you know, to control them. Because like I say, you're probably never going to get a 100% uh, dispute-free society. Not just in Ghana, I mean, anywhere. Because human beings, we have conflicting interests. And it's this conflict interest that bring about dispute. But coming back to uh, the, the other issue in chieftaincy, what, do we, what steps do we do to get this uh, done? And that's why in our constitution we have provisions and the act, Chieftaincy Act, we, we, we codify lines of succession to stools. The, the issue is, the, if you, like you said, in some areas in Ghana where you don't have a presence of police, government, but you have chiefs, ask yourself, how many chiefs do you have in Ghana? And you'll find that there are numerous, numerous, and numerous. And a small stool or skin of a, a village of just 50 people could equally be a source of a dispute leading to uh, trouble between big powers in chieftaincy. So a dispute could come from any angle, mm -hmm. you know. But of course, we, in the research, we normally start with the paramounts, the downwards, uh, in the order of the command, the mm -hmm. command theory. So we have done some work, and we have got some laws, but, and we are still feverishly continuing to, as I talk, we are, we are getting some through and uh, at the same time you, I was in a meeting before I came I, I'm, we're working on an amendment to an act to parliament about uh, this idea of disrespecting the authority of a chief or not to respond to a chief's call the punishment you know the 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 the, the chieftaincy disputes that we have, I have what I want to say is it is in the interest of everybody that we don't have chieftaincy disputes. Sometimes uh, sheer love for power, chief, chief, chiefly power, drives certain people to certain extents. And I always say that there is this uh, proverb, proverbial story that I hear, uh, I've heard from some chiefs, elderly chiefs, of somebody who was to get, staying with a junior brother and they are all royals from the same mother, the same father. And they lost the, the uncle who was the chief. And this question came up as to which of the two should sit on the stool and rule. Mm -hmm. And uh, the elders, in their wisdom, decided that it should be the senior brother because he's, he's older, he's the elder. Mm -hmm. Well, you would have, I would have thought that that should have been the end. But the junior brother kicked against it with the, uh, with the explanation that the, the senior brother has not traveled widely. And so he's not very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And he, the junior brother, has traveled far and wide. And he thinks he's more in, uh, equipped mm -hmm. to, to, to be a chief. And uh, the elders put their foot down. And uh, they, they installed the, 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 senior the senior brother as a chief. This made the junior one piffed. And so he organized the, the, the young man in the, in the town to the effect that this rule that is there that when you go to tap and wine, you bring something for the chief. If you go to bush, you get animal, you bring something. If you go to get something, 
you bring something to none. Okay. This young man organized the, the people to say, this is a very bad custom. After all, when you go chase a grass cutter, does the chief go there to help you? So they, there was a looter. And, you know, it got to a point that it was so bad. And uh, the, a, a, a meeting was convened by the elders. Mm -hmm. And the, the chief, the very wise chief as such, he stopped every other elder from talking and decided that from that day onwards, he has accepted the amendment and the good old custom was changed. And from henceforth, if you went to kill a grass cutter or a bush cow, whatever, bring to the nana whatever that you want to bring him. If it's the tail, if it's the intestines, he would accept it in good faith. And so the tradition was changed. And uh, some of them, out of spite, was bringing the chief the tail. Some brought the ear, others the skin. Some even would eat their flesh and bring the bones. And Nana, being wise, accepted it all. Then, not quite long, he died. Or well, he went to the village. Then the issue came up as to who should now come to be the chief. And the elders who decided in the first time, now decided this time, that it's the turn of the junior brother to come and be the chief. So he was installed. And uh, it was not long when he realized that what he had done is now haunting him. They, bring him scraps. they will bring him scraps. <laughs> <laughs> Tills, intestines. Yes. Initially, the young man decided to just keep quiet. But it got to a point that he thought it was unacceptable. So he called a meeting of the elders and uh, threw, threw the matter before them. That where on earth, where on earth would you send a, a, a till of an animal to a chief? Where on earth? He has roamed farm wide. He has not seen this anywhere. And then the elder said, who caused him? <laughs> so, you see, if you, if you in chieftaincy, you, if you cannot be patient to wait, then mm -hmm. you may as well not just expect much good and, and enjoyment in this situation if it's your turn. Mm. So, this is my advice. And uh, as or people who claim chieftaincy must also understand that you should become interested in the stool even as, at, at a very early age. You should not go enjoying roaming about when you hear that the old man is dead, then you come back suddenly and want to become a chief. If you become a you'll be a very bad chief. So people must become interested. Once you are born a royal and you know there's one day the possibility Stay around the stool and serve. Please learn to serve and also don't learn. Otherwise that's part of the problem we have I think in this country that uh, some people sometimes even don't, if we talk about you they will condemn chieftaincy only for you to hear one day that uh, they have come back and they, they, they want they, 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 this to I think that's not a, the, 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 these are practical things I think if we do in addition to our, uh, the measures the ministry is taking to codify these lines of succession okay, but at the moment uh, can a traditional area I mean, I come to your ministry to say look we have this problem and we, we need you to help or what, where does your jurisdiction end? Yeah, well, let me say this clearly. We have difference between chieftain's administration and chieftain's institution. Mm -hmm. If you talk about chieftain's institution, you talk about chiefs. Mm -hmm. If you talk about chieftain's administration, you talk about civil servants, registrars, court clerks, uh, what have you, mm -hmm. councils, lawyers, and, and then up to the minister. Those are royalists, not royals. Mm -hmm. Even if they are royals, once you go into the administrative aspect, you are, you are, you are, you are, you, you you, you don't see yourself as a, you know, you, you are serving. You are not enjoying the, 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 the royal dom. You are rather serving royal dom. Mm -hmm. And so traditional councils, the chiefs who make up the committees, they decide on chieftaincy matters. And the regional houses, the membership of all, are all chiefs. And the national, the 15 members, they are all chiefs. These are the ones we refer to as the institution. Mm -hmm. And so when there's an issue as to who should be a, a chief, it's an answer that can only come from the institution. That's the regional house, the national house, and traditional councils. Um, the, the ministry is a facilitating body, a link between government and the traditional institution, uh, one that ensures that you have the qualified personnel to serve the chiefs, uh, you know, the, the traditional registrars, uh, traditional council registrars, and then the, you have the court class and you have council. These are the ones that really make the institution if you don't have very good uh, administrative uh, staff to serve the chiefs, you wouldn't have a good chieftaincy machinery. 
Because it's not the chiefs themselves going to put down their smokes or their, 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 their kente and do the work. It's these ones that will do the work. That's why they have to be trained and become efficient. Let me get uh, Felix. Have I got Felix still? Yes, I'm there. Yes, my brother. Uh, the, there's, there's so much that the ministry can do. I think we, uh, the chiefs should be able to uh, deal with their own uh, problems. So, you know, wh yes. which, uh, which is the way forward then? Come again. I said, so what, what, how then do we solve it? You know, uh, is there not going to be a silver bullet? Should we take district by district, drag them all to court and say, this is how the hierarchy works in this area, sign and seal, let's move to the next district? You know, um, I left off on the point that the National House of Chiefs, um, the, the, the solution or the honor, the, the, the solution to the problem lies squarely in the hands of the National House of Chiefs. Mm -hmm. I did not have the opportunity to hear what the Honorable, Honorable Minister said. But if I have to ask your question, uh, answer your question, first of all, still we will have to uh, give the House of Chiefs the chance to handle issues of purely traditional uh, nature like chieftaincy disputes. And then I have to also say that often there's a tendency for factions or feeding factions or factions that are not that are agreed about, about a chieftaincy, the handling of a chieftaincy matter, to, to go to the courts. And I'm sure the, the Honorable Minister, who I know is also a lawyer, will tell you that courts have no court solutions have not been able to actually deal decisively with uh, chieftaincy disputes. What they do is simply to compel or uh, will restrain the, the factions for a while. And before I realize the thing will see my app. Now, back to your question as to how do we now resolve it in the current state, uh, state of things. Um, yes, they could decentralize the solution first to the, the district level where you have, they have traditional councils. If they, if they are unable to resolve it, there's a higher hierarchy like the regional level. But I think the solution particularly uh, lies First, in the area that has occurred. What I think also is a problem, and I believe that is just that it, there's, there has been a disconnect, is that there's, I believe there's a lot of information, particularly at the uh, issue of African cities, uh, about research findings and documentation on uh, school histories. I remember while I was a student. In Lagos, in the towards the 1990-2000, I participated uh, in a full data collection in that respect. And I believe that if the House of Chiefs and probably the Ministry of Chiefs Affairs contact the Institute of African Studies, they will have information pertaining to uh, school histories of nearly every every uh, traditional area in Ghana, and those two histories will point to. Uh, um, the succession plans, the roster, those who are uh, uh, royals, and who should come next. Those issues, I believe, are all documented at the issue of African cities. Let now, if we deal with research findings, if we make use of research findings mm -hmm. of this nature, I believe it will go a long way to help. We will not be left with enforcing compliance to what the research findings say. If there is still a gap in the data, I think research institutions can be empowered to deal with this issue once and for all because now we are all undergoing different transformations. There's modernity and even the young men today have a different thinking as to how the chieftains institutions should look like, in the, look like in the first place. And that is why it is necessary for some form of um, documentation to be made and kept for future generations. Today we are there, tomorrow we may not be there, but the institution will continue, and those who will take up the mantle of other being chiefs will have something to refer to to guide them so that uh, uh, we don't have so many disputes as we have today. Also notice that the position of chief, uh, the, the chief has become very lucrative, uh, or, uh, uh, this is particularly because of uh, the way politicians have also um, tried to go around them in order to get maybe votes. Mm -hmm.
So it has made the position very lucrative. And apart from that, the land that, uh, particularly two lands, that have always been under the control of chiefs, uh, the value of such lands have appreciated over the years. Uh, in areas where lands actually have natural uh, resources, like mineral resources, the case is even worse. And I'm sure the value of lands uh, where uh, these chiefs, who have been assassinated, probably precise over, have actually increased, making it uh, one, uh, an area that everybody will want actually uh, to become chief. So these are some of the things that probably, if they are taken on board, it probably would help us to solve uh, this period of chicken disputes once and for all. Doctor, yeah, you want yes, to react to First of all, let me say that uh, I wish that this uh, particular contributor could uh, mention the research he knows in the African studies. Because I've been in the research as in my business as well for a long time. And uh, uh, I'm not aware of. So if I'll be very happy if any certain, uh, he says of every traditional area, I'll, be, I'll really be very happy because um, chieftaincy research is not easy. I mean, it's it's, you know, it's governed by law. What that means is that there's a procedure. If you don't go according to procedure, you can be taken to court for, for the whole thing to be declared uh, ultra virus. That means it's like, uh, it's not valid. And, and in those days before... Okay, still in, the in, in those days before the, the, before the, what I mean is before, the, before colonial rule, the Jews used to go to war with arms, you know, weapons and... These days, we are in a modern state, so the war takes a form of litigation. Mm. And, and the, 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 they go to court. That's what I'm, I'm not surprised he mentioned it. Yeah, but that's because it's democracy. We are in a modern state, and that's what I want to mention. He's talking about the National House. You see, when, when you have, uh, and this problem is not only typical of Ghana, you find it in virtually every post colonial African state where you have chieftaincy. When you are in a modern state, there are certain things that the law of the state, what I told the state through law, the constitutional law, the acts, there are certain things that will be banned, will not be allowed. But when you lean on traditional practice, you find that th th those things are like accepted. So what happens, you have in the modern state a gap between sometimes what is in the law and what is in their practice. And that's where you would, the challenge is for government. And that's, that's why uh, I believe one of the areas we, the Minister of Chieftains, is very much concerned to make sure we get a, a bridge between the, the, this gap. Because the, 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 the Chieftains disputes, as long as they are nasty in the form that we find them sometimes, will not help for our healthy economic development. And so that is why uh, the, this structure is there, the regional national challenge, to look into the disputes, the cases. Mm -hmm. But there is also a good reason why government doesn't interfere, because the constitution says that uh, the institution is protected. And so if my ministry were to start to... I remember that somebody asked me that, uh, did she dispute? Minister, have you got their factions? Who, who do things there? Have you listened to them? I said, no, the minister is not supposed to take a, give an answer to the to the Teshi people that look, this man, he should be the chief. That that is not to be done. If I were to do that, next time I'm not minister and somebody else minister, what about if he come and tell that you go, let this man come? And if that were to happen, the institution will not be able to play the role it's playing now. Mm -hmm. People should bear this in mind. And so the judicial process may be slow in the regional houses and national houses, but they are working. They are disposed, okay, but more are coming. The, uh, the other time there was a program, somebody asked me that uh, he thinks chieftaincy is outmoded and a kick and should be abolished. He thinks it's lost its importance. And my reply was that if indeed that thing, if it were so, why is it that more and more Ghanaians want to become chiefs? Like he was saying. <laughs> if the thing is smelling, I, I would have. But you see, people have different reasons for. But let's say, let's, let's say that what we have to do as a nation is to, like he says, parcel it in such a manner that it would promote our economic development. Mm -hmm. So that those parts of it, that in Kumba or, or that are cumbersome, we would, in our way, in our, as a nation, probably, and not to use violent means, but to, the, the people themselves would, would be, would, they should be made to see need to, to, to drop them. And I believe we are getting there. 
the, the some time ago certain practices uh, these days people even when they say them they themselves know that what they are saying is in the modern context well, the, well, well here i am you know uh, tv presenter by all means and i'm sure many years ago it probably wouldn't have been heard of so yes. the times have changed yes. i'm going to take a break yes. and when i come back uh, just briefly i want to find out that is the struggle for the stool not part of the value? Because if the stool was just there and nobody wanted it and they were carrying it about, do you want it, do you want it, you probably wouldn't build any value. We should struggle for it. Is there a you know, valid point? I'm coming straight back. News and events. You know, yesterday night we had information about, our, about age 40 day after. Mm -hmm. Nana was relaxing in his porch, in his house. Uh, the wife was in the room watching television. Suddenly there was a gunshot. So the wife got up to go out to find out what was happening. But as soon as she got up, Nana also came from outside into the, into the hall, breathing of blood. So the wife heard Nana shut him down Call another niece of Nana. Then they rush Nana to hospital after calling for a car. So that was exactly what we have been told happened. Sad story. Uh, any suspects so far? Uh, so far, we have not made any of it. We have launched an investigation to the case. And uh, so far, no arrest has been made. The story goes on to say there were some threat messages, you know, threatening messages that came on his phone and he reported it. Were, were they followed up as to, you know, where the numbers came from if all numbers are now registered? Uh, some of this information, you would like to keep it uh, a secret so that uh, you follow those leads and see where it can take it. Okay. Again, three months prior to this, you know, there were uh, an angry mob, if I may say, that came and torched uh, two of his cars. You know, indeed, he had to come out and I think extinguish them. Uh, could they be linked? Were those people uh, or those perpetrators arrested? Yeah, some people were arrested in connection with the uh, of the two cars which were sent, which were set at police. Investigations were conducted by the police at Sequa, but they realized that they don't have solid evidence to charge them with anything, mm -hmm. so they were released of bail while they were still continuing investigations. For now, we don't want to jump into any history conclusion by saying that that incident may have a link with the current one. We don't want to rule out anything also either. Okay. So we, uh, we are open, we are turning our, our net very wide so that anything that comes in, you are uh, uh, taking and, and work on it. NCP, uh, two more questions before you go. Did, did, did Nana need extra security men? I mean, could you have provided him with one security man or one policeman to give him that extra security? No, there wasn't because there was no problem in self. Nana is a business contractor. He spends much of his time in Sunyan and also goes to leave at so he was alternating between Sunan and Sepa. Mm -hmm. And any time he goes to Sepa, he was a free person. There was no incident whatsoever at Sepa. So there was nothing which prompted the police that Nana's life may be taken, and therefore we have to provide security for him. Sepa is a very peaceful town. Everybody spoke well of Nana. So there was no incident which alerted the police that something may happen to Nana for which we should have thought of providing security for Nama any time that was there. Sad story. But, I mean, putting your ears on the ground and in, being that it's chieftaincy, were there no chieftaincy dispute, maybe a group saying that maybe the way in which he ascended the throne, they are not happy with, or he wasn't the, he wasn't the one to go on the throne, maybe he was somebody else? Because we hear these stories most of the time. Were there no stories like that in Sierra Nana has, has been on the throne. Uh, for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the test that we made was that nobody is also claiming to be the chief. So there was nothing like uh, Nana was fighting over someone over the 
two mm. or whatever it is. So there's no problem getting to cheat and say, uh, uh, after Sepa. Well, it's a very sad story. But ACP, thank you very much for uh, shedding light onto this story for us this evening. Thank you very much. That's uh, ACP Patrick Eduse Sapo, uh, police commander uh, in Bono Ahafu. And so I'm sure Sequa definitely falls under his jurisdiction. Uh, doctor, I'll start with you before one on the break. If a stool or a skin is vacant, shouldn't there be that little you know, interest, this sort of struggle, maybe not necessarily fight negatively, but, you know, a positive struggle to say, no, I want this too, to show that there's, there's some value on it. Well, it's, 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 it's order. That's why we, some, people, some, some scholars have described Chief Tensi as a democratic institution mm -hmm. because they no, normally they nominate people, they select. You normally have two or three people, but eventually, you know, one, one, one gets it. I mean, it, it works perfectly in mm -hmm. some areas. And uh, so there's nothing bad about it. But the, let me just make a comment. The, you know, I mentioned that we have different types of disputes. Dispute. Uh, I, I very much liked the way the, 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 the ACP put it. Mm -hmm. um, further questioning in certain issues will not help. The fact is that even in chieftaincy, we say that there are some areas that are not researchable. You cannot go into somebody's school room to research his black stool to ask him what fowls or what he does in his rituals. But we know that this is happening. So you, you, use your, you, you, you use other means, other knowledge. And that's why sometimes you, you, you leave it to the person's own professional. That's why people are trained. And the, this, the, what happened, this particular side is the tragedy we are talking about. Uh, it could have been due to so many things, you know. But there's one particular type of dispute which uh, I, I didn't touch on. Mm -hmm. We call it palace or silent dispute. That is, in a village or town, there may be a quarrel between royals or info, or in the palace. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's not discussed in public. That too can be uh, very, very generous. But if, if, if royals are, are having their quarrel, who are you to, you know, go, <laughs> go, or go even to, to ask? So sometimes there are certain things that in chieftaincy, uh, you probably cannot just get the answer 2 plus 2, 4 immediately. You have to use... You, and this is one t area the British, when they arrived in this part of the world, they didn't know. And that's why they took certain decisions that created problems after they left for us. Because they, they came with a certain mindset from Europe. But from, the mindset here was completely different. So it, 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 it's just a matter <coughs> of... One cannot even say right now that this is the cause of what. Yes, there may be a kind of dispute. But if, if all you know, it may not be a dispute, but it may just be a criminal action, a criminal act. Mm -hmm. it, it, it can happen. So it's, it's too early to say. Doc, again, you know, you take like the UK monarch system. And from today, they know even the eighth successor and the tenth successor, they just know from today that it's going to be your firstborn and his firstborn and her firstborn and that firstborn. So there's no argument. You know, Prince Charles has been waiting for the last 70 years as an apprentice. God, knows, you know, helps so, so that when the queen goes, and then it is his. And then when he goes, then he goes to William, and then he goes to Williams. You know, and then the, the story goes on. Can we streamline ours? We can. And, and I believe we'll get there uh, eventually. You know, no, 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 no country develops just in the space of uh, just two and trickle of eye or uh, as a volcano. Development, the UK, for example, you have taken... It's a, a, a dynasty or a monarchy that has spanned how many years? Like a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So that's why they say the British constitutes a product of evolution. It, you know, it's, it, there was a time in the UK when they had the barons or mm -hmm. the laws, where, where they fought wars, feudals. So it's a process. What we have just got to do is to work faster and faster, uh, taking advantage of modernity, mm -hmm. that we don't have to go, it, we, it take that, uh, that long time to get to where they go to. We, we, we can do it. But going back to this point, you see, it's because, the, yes, that's their model. But, you know, they came with that, and that created problems for us. For instance, one of the precepts was that how can, uh, 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 the, imagine if in England you had 
so many hundreds of people claiming to be royals and want to be chief. So there was a policy to try to cut down. In most of the chiefdoms they got, they wanted to cut down the number of people who could become chiefs. And in doing that, they robbed some people of who later on came back to fight for their. And that has created problems in many, in many areas. Mm -hmm. But that was ignorance. They thought that what their system was the same as ours. So I, I, in trying to solve a problem, it's very important to look at the background. You know, the, the, the background. For instance, if we take the, the Constitution Article 11.3, it says that customary law for uh, is rules of uh, custom applicable to particular communities. And the emphasis on particular communities is to make sure that we don't probably, you know, apply certain precepts of certain communities to others. Although, as a state, modern state Ghana, that we have a perimeter, a government, that the law would not let you go beyond that mm -hmm. to protect individual liberty. And when it comes to that, it's non negotiable. I see. The other thing, uh, can we, I mean, your ministry, go district by district and say, listen, come and sit down and let's talk from Paramountcy or the other sub chiefs that come under you, which ones are on the left, which ones are on the right, and break it all down. Because one thing you mentioned, which is also very tricky, is which chief rules over who? Which town comes under which town? It's one of the very difficult things to manage. You know, he says, no, I don't swear to you because you didn't give me my stool. I swear to him. He said, no, I gave you the land. The other guy said, I gave you the stool and allegiance and all that. Can we solve this thing once and for all, make it legal, so that henceforth every chief knows that, oh, this is where I am and this is nowhere? Well, if, if, you, if, you, if you want to know my, my opinion about this matter, mm. uh, I think that the one problem we, we have and which uh, my ministry is trying is to, you know, I always say that if you, if you, have, if you pass a law, like the legal, legal thing you are saying, legal dog. If you do all that, but if you don't sensitize and educate the people about it, you don't achieve much. Mm. We want the same thing is just what I mentioned that we should try as much as possible to talk about chieftaincy and educate people about chieftaincy, even when there's no trouble. Because when you discuss chieftaincy in a, a tension, in, during tension or during a crisis, it even foments fighting. But we should be able to discuss matters even when there is no conflict so that we can solve it. You prevent conflict better than uh, when it comes to resolving the conflict. It's cheaper to, to prevent it. When you discuss it, people, people make up their mind b before the, the day comes that because of uh, some falsehood, they, they, they start harming themselves. We should really uh, educate people. And that's why I think what we are doing is useful. Mm -hmm. People must understand. Uh, that the, the institution, uh, it has problems, yes, but then the institution has certain good parts. And most of the time, the good parts are not highlighted. Mm -hmm. Th that's one. And so if, the, if, the, if, we have, if we only talk about the troubles, and each time we talk about it, it's about the, uh, 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 something happening, I don't think probably that will give a good image or a good understanding of the institution. I think that if we're to go district by district, like you're saying, um, uh, probably the best is to start from the angle of sensitization. Because any time we have done codification, we normally have what you call orientation workshop. You go to orientate the chiefs. Let them understand that when the, when the data collectors come around, they are come around to take information for the purpose of documenting the, to prevent dispute, not to probably undermine them or try to come and eavesdrop certain things. If you don't do that sort of ground preparation. Some people may even see them as people coming with some doubtful motive. So it's always very important to sensitize and the educate. It's very important because when you come to talk about chief, you are talking about power. And when power is involved, there can be distrust. You know? People have to be sure. So the chiefs, you, you really have to do a lot of... Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, you know, bring a, do a lot of PR and modernization in the uh, chieftains and a lot of education. But I like that. Don't talk about chieftains only when there's an issue. When there's nothing happening and there's peace, bring the issue on board and start education. Uh, Dr. Henry Seydou Dana, Minister for Chieftaincy and Traditional Affairs. Doc, thank you very much for uh, honoring us this 
uh, invitation and an interview. Uh, my name is Nanan Sakwa, and as I say, tomorrow we'll be back to do it all over again.